Reno, Nevada, one of the gambling meccas of the West. Most of its visitors are interested in making a 10 or a 4 the hard way. I had another interest for being here. To be exact, a woman who was supposed to have been killed during the war with nine of my men back in July of 1944. By chance, I read that she was opening at a smart night spot in New York City. I sent her my medallion with a message. She didn't wait, just packed and got out of town. It took a little while, but I learned she'd gone to Reno. I had a lot of questions aching for answers. They all spelled a double-crossing dame. Yvette Marchand. Reno, Paris, Buenos Aires, they're all alike if you're looking for someone. If you have the right friends, every city becomes a small town. I made a few calls. The word went out that I wanted Yvette Marchand. She was something special. But I bumped into something even more special. Uh, Mike Lanyard? That's right. I'm Inspector Stillman from the Bureau. I'd like to have you come with me. What for? Murder. Got a special reason for picking me? Real special. You left your calling card by one of the bodies. Can you give me one good reason why I'd come all the way to Rio to kill those men? I could give you a lot of reasons. We've got every available man in the Western District down here. Must have been a high-priced robbery. Well, it depends on the value you place on human lives. Every man, woman, and child in a small city, for instance. What? This was a very unusual robbery. Could wind up being the most disastrous robbery in history. Go on. Well, you see, there's an arsenal test center here in the desert. A company in Los Angeles was sending a batch of super braid explosives with a new time-fusing device. Those couriers who were delivering it were forced off the road and they were shot to death. You mean they went to all that trouble just to steal an explosive? Probably figured that the couriers were carrying money. Arsenal operation has been top secret. We mean to clear it up without relaxing security. Of course, if we have to, we'll take those wraps off. What do you want from me? Confession? Got to admit you're a strong possibility. You're way off base. But I may be able to help. You've got to be fast. It's 10 o'clock. That explosion was fused in Los Angeles, set to go off at 7 o'clock in the morning. You're not giving very good odds, are you? <laughs> Who knows from odds in my racket? Okay, you got those nine hours. Thanks. Lanyard's leaving. Yeah, Joe Sachs is on it. After leaving Stillman's office, I checked with several of my friends. One of them didn't disappoint me. He told me Yvette Marchand was working in a club called The Palace. If it hadn't been for the promise I'd made to Stillman, I would have paid her off for the nine lives she sold on the river. Instead, I had to forget that and find a bomb. She had my medallion. She had to have some answers. A few minutes later, I was in front of the Palace Club. There was a picture of Yvette Marchand. The last ten years hadn't changed her very much. I spoke to one of the employees. He told me how to get to her dressing room. I went to the back of the club and through an alley. There were no names on the door, so I took a guess. I tried one door, and then the next. Who is it? I knew I tapped the right door. Flowers. It's been a long time, Yvette. 
Paris, 1944. That was a long time ago. The name's Michael Lanyard. I don't know you. Well, there were others. Joe Spitz, Kip Martin, John Woolsey, a few more. Their names mean nothing to me. No. Let me help you. Pre-invasion, you were supposed to give us the locations of some German ammunition dumps. Remember? You would have been better off if I had died, too. Till I saw your picture in a New York paper, I thought you'd been killed along with the others. I can explain. The plans went wrong. It wasn't my fault. I had nothing to do with You're it. You're lying. You sold out to the highest bidder. Oh, I don't want to remember the war. That was years ago. Can't we forget? I can't. That's why I sent you the medallion. That's why I followed you here. What are you going to do about it? Maybe I would have killed you. I don't know. As it is, I think you've hanged yourself. Where is the medallion I sent you? I lost it. Sure you did. Eight miles out of Reno, next to two dead men. I told you, I lost it. You must have had help. Who were your playmates? Oh, leave me alone. Get dressed. You're going with me. I'll wait outside. Maybe it would have been wiser to phone Stillman and let him take over. But that would have been too easy. I owed Yvette and her playmates a payoff. They were going to collect it with interest. I don't enjoy playing pigeon for anyone. And I still couldn't forget the nine men. I decided to hurry her up. But someone had decided to slow me down. Whoever slugged me did a thorough job. Because by the time I came to, the club had closed. The night man told me that Yvette had left, giving the management a 10-minute notice. It didn't surprise me. He added she was living at the Mapes Hotel. I started for there. I only wanted to get my hands on her. But it wasn't that easy. Yvette had checked out and left town. I had to find her and her partners. They didn't know the stolen loot was a bomb. Lieutenant Stillman's man hadn't lost me for a second. If I hadn't been in a hurry, I'd have said hello. This train was a milk run over the Sierra Nevada mountains to Sacramento. I prayed my hunch was right. If Yvette was on the train, the chances were good that the bomb was with her. Stillman's man follow me aboard. I sent for the conductor. I kept remembering Stillman's words. The bomb is strong enough to blow up a small city. The next few hours would tell a brutal story if I was wrong. Do you want to see me? Yeah, come in. Is there an Yvette Marshall on the train? Nobody by that name had a reservation. She's a uh, good-looking brunette. Oh. Well, we got a couple of good-looking ones on the train this trip. Let's see, I put one in 14C and the other uh, 12A.
His information wasn't good, and my hunch looked bad. I lost no time in getting to the first compartment. 14C. Under different conditions, it would have been worth the trip. But I remembered the bomb and said, Wrong number. compartment 12A and knocked on the door. Part of my hunch was right. Yvette was on the train. Only she was dead. <laughs> meant the bomb was on the train with the killer. It was time to introduce myself to Stillman's man. The next second, the train, which had been moving along, suddenly stopped. The leader lights went out. Slide. The train stalled. Hmm. Well, what do you want to talk to me about? That girl in the compartment. She's still where you saw her last. You're in my compartment now. You want to tell me what happened? Yeah, sure. Her name was Yvette Marshall. She was starting with that robbery. I was following her to see if she had any partners. Not much chance of following that deal anymore. I'm not so sure. I think the killer may still be around. Unless they jumped when the train stalled. That's not likely. Eight foot of snow outside. Oh, that means the killer and the explosive are probably still on the train. Better get busy. Maybe you're right. It's 4.30 now. That gives us just two and a half hours. We'll start a car-to-car -car search. Passengers, baggage, the works. It's gonna take time. It'll take at least ten hours for the rescue squad to get here. What happens if we don't turn up anything? Abandon the train just before seven and let up blow. Better think of something else. We're on Rim Rock, a cliff above, a couple of million feet of snow, and a thousand feet drop below. Oh, great. Well, there's got to be a way out. A man might get across the snow embankment at the end of the train, but what about the women and children? Sachs. I'll take the back of the train. You stop from the front. Get everybody in the club car. What for? We're going to tell them about the bomb. They'll panic. Maybe, but it might smoke out the killer. What about the train crew? Get them, too. Half an hour later, everybody on the train was in the club car. They were all dressed as though they knew they were in trouble. I am Lieutenant Joe Sachs. You've all been brought here because of something vitally important. I want you to know that somewhere on this train is an unknown person who earlier today robbed and murdered two United States government couriers. Someone in this group is that person. I want to say to him that the case he stole contains not money, but a super-great explosive with a new time-fusing device. That fusing device had earlier been set for 7 o'clock. 
In exactly one hour and 48 minutes, the contents of that case will explode. Now, I say to the person who has the case, please, leave it in one of the train corridors. We will destroy it. I urge that person to think of the lives of the many women and children on board this train. There is no escape from this train. On one side, there is a drop of 1,000 feet. The rest of the train is surrounded by a snowbank caused by an avalanche. Now, now, hold it, everyone, hold it. I want everyone to return to their proper places on the train. Open each and every piece of luggage. A car-to-car -car inspection will start immediately. Now, the most important thing to remember is that every second counts. We'll do everything we can to help, and I know you will, too. Maybe it won't be enough, but God willing, it will. Now, let's go, everybody. Come right along. I kept searching every face, looking for a clue that would not only point out the killer, but locate the bomb. Whoever it was either didn't believe Sax's story or was too smart to make a move. I'm sure praying it'll work. It must. We won't have time for another guess. <laughs> Sachs, the conductor, and I began a car-to-car -car search. Searching baggage and interviewing passengers took a lot of time. I asked a thousand questions, so did Sachs. told me the train crew was only half through the baggage car. Their result, like ours, was zero. The clock kept ticking away precious seconds. It was time for a miracle, but none was in sight. I headed for Saks. I had a wild idea. You got on that train at Reno? This your identification, huh? It's where you live? Find anything. That's P.O. I was going to ask you the same thing. I told him if the killer wanted to stall for time, the best way was to keep moving from car to car, following us as we completed our search. We decided to double back and maybe catch someone who hadn't moved fast enough. Fourteen minutes to go. I headed for the club car. The train had taken on a strange silence. The people were praying and mentally putting their houses in order. A strange peace had settled over all of the passengers. They knew they had reached the point of no return. I reached the club car. There was no more heat and the cold had transformed the steel coaches into icy tombs. A middle-aged couple holding one another. An elderly woman praying. The bartender staring into space. Suddenly, I saw someone who I thought hadn't moved fast enough. Drink? No. Oh. Know about the search? I don't remember you. Which means? Which means it's your turn. Where's your compartment? Are you a cop? My name is Lanyard. What's your compartment number? 4C. My name is Johnson. Let's go, Johnson. There's the luggage. Take your choice. I'll start with this one. Look, Johnson, in exactly five and one half minutes, we blow higher than Venus. Get smart, get rid of it. The man's speech didn't fool me. I followed that messenger for weeks. His bag contained bonds, big, beautiful bonds. I've got them. Who do you think you're kidding? In five minutes, you'll find out the hard way. You know, it's too bad they didn't give me a key to that case. I'd like to open it just to see the expression on your face. You better do something, Johnson, and do it fast. I'm going to. Tell me how to get out of here. You heard Sachs. He told you there's no way out. No speeches. Just tell me how to get out of here. Tell me how to get out of here. OK. The end of the train. The conductor said a man might crawl over the snow and get out. That's better. Then what? The highway runs parallel with the railroad. You can't miss it. 
You know, Lanyard, I'm a little disappointed in you. Before I killed her that, she told me you'd be trouble. It's funny how a guy will change when the going gets tough. I'll give you as funny as what a man will do for nothing. Better get going, Johnson. Get over there. was all over, and I said a prayer of thanks. Just got the report from Sachs. You must have had some shindig. Could have been more comfortable. Did Johnson say why he killed Yvette? Yeah, she wanted more than a share. He should have given it to her. It was a bad investment. How'd you ever spot Johnson? I have a feeling he spotted me. You know, Mike, you caused me a lot of trouble last night. What? Well, I took this thing home and my wife saw it. Oh. Thought it was cute. Wanted it for a charm bracelet. Kept me up half the night. That's too bad. Yeah, when I was leaving today, she said to me, will you ask him to give it to me? If I gave it to her, it would only get her into trouble. You know, Mike, I think you're right. Thank you.